It's like pre-recorded. This program was pre-recorded. Well, of course it was pre-recorded. When else are you going to record it? Afterwards? <laughs> That's the whole purpose of recording. Hello, what's that crack? What's that story with you? Welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out some George Carlin on airlines and flying. I've been getting loads of comments saying check out George Carlin. I've checked him out a few times and it's been funny, it's been funny. So yeah, let's see what it's about. Let's go. Something else we have in common. Flying on the airlines and listening to the airline's announcements and trying to pretend to ourselves that the language they're using is really English. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it to me. The whole thing starts when you get to the gate. First announcement. We would like to begin the boarding process. <laughs> Extra word, process, not necessary. Boarding is enough. We'd like to begin the boarding. Simple, tells the story. People add extra words when they want things to sound more important than they really are. Boarding process. Sounds important. It isn't. It's just a bunch of people getting on an airplane. People like to sound important. Weathermen on television talk about shower activity. Sounds more important than showers. I even heard one guy on CNN talk about a rain event. Swear to God. He said, Louisiana's expecting a rain event. I thought, holy shit, I hope I can get tickets to that. Emergency situation. News people like to say, police have responded to an emergency situation. No, they haven't. They've responded to an emergency. We know it's a situation. Everything is a situation. Anyway, as part of this boarding process, they say, we would like to pre-board. Well, what exactly is that, anyway? What does it mean to pre-board? You get on before you get on? That's another complaint of mine. Too much use of this prefix pre. It's all over the language now. Pre this, pre that. Place the turkey in a preheated oven. It's ridiculous. There are only two states an oven can possibly exist in, heated or unheated. Preheated is a meaningless fucking term. It's like pre-recorded. This program was pre-recorded. Well, of course it was pre-recorded. When else are you going to record it? Afterwards? <laughs> That's the whole purpose of recording, to do it beforehand. Otherwise, it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> pre-existing, pre-planning, pre-screening. You know what I tell these people? Pre-suck my genital situation. <laughs> And they seem to understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, as part of this pre-boarding, they say, we would like to pre-board those passengers traveling with small children. But well, what about those passengers traveling with large children? Uh, sorry. <laughs> large children. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say, all the pre-stuff, I think that only happens in the US. Because I fly like almost every, almost every month. I'm always going to Ireland. I'm always going, I fly to Ireland probably like at least... 10 times a year, I'd say, at least 10 times a year, and I'm going holidays, so altogether, I probably fly like 16, 17 times a year, and I never see the pre-stuff in, in Europe, I usually fly around Europe, but in, probably in America, that's where you guys do all the pre-stuff, Is that like, I think that's only in America, why? It's just to get people in that might have small children, but what if I pay to be in first class, can I get in ahead of people that have small children? Hmm, let me know. Let me know. Anyone that knows that, let me know. Thank you. Children. <laughs> Suppose you have a two-year-old. But well, what about those passengers traveling with large children? <laughs> Suppose you have a two-year-old with a pituitary disorder. <laughs> you know, a six-foot infant with an oversized head. <laughs> kind of kid you see in the National Enquirer all the time. <laughs> Actually, with a kid like that, I think you're better off checking him right in with your luggage at the curb, don't you? <laughs> well, they like it under there. It's dark. They're used to that. About this time, someone is telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane, get on the plane. I say, fuck you, I'm getting in the plane. In the plane. Let evil Knievel get on the plane. I'll be in here with you folks in uniform. There seems to be less wind in here. They might tell you you're on a non-stop flight. Well, I don't think I care for that. No, I insist that my flight stop. Preferably at an airport. 
It's those sudden unscheduled cornfield and housing development stops that seem to interrupt the flow of my day. Here's one they just made up. Near miss. When two planes almost collide, they call it a near miss. It's a near hit. A collision is a near miss. Look, they nearly miss. Yes, but not quite. Near miss. They might tell you your flight has been delayed because of a change of equipment. Broken plane. <laughs> tell me to put my seat. Speaking of that, oh my god, if your flight get delayed in Europe, for you guys that don't know, if you get delayed more than four hours, the three, I'm not sure if it's three or four hours, you get 250 euros. I've done it, I've got it twice. Because growing up, my flight was always delayed, but I never did anything. Then I went on holiday with some lads, I went to some, uh, on a stag to, was it Belgium, I think. Then our flight got delayed, and one of the lads told me, you do know you can claim it back. And I got 250 euros. And after that, I've done it some other time. But yeah, I got, my flight cost me like 40 euros. Or something like that. So I was able to get my, you know, my flight money four times. So yeah, just in case you guys don't know, let me know in America. Do you guys get that as well? Do you get money if you're America, anywhere in Europe, Canada? Let me know. Africa, anyone that's watching? Let me know where you guys are from. Thank you. I'm loving this geezer. This geezer is funny. Seat back forward. <laughs> Tell me to put my seat back forward. <laughs> well, I don't bend that way. <laughs> If I could put my seat back forward, I'd be in porno movies. <laughs> then they mentioned carry-on luggage. First time I heard carry-on, I thought they were going to bring a dead deer on board. I thought, what the hell do they mean with that? Don't they have the little TV dinners anymore? Then I thought, carry-on, carry-on, there's going to be a party. People are going to be carrying on on the plane. Well, I don't care for that. I like a serious attitude on the plane, especially on the flight deck, which is the latest euphemism for cockpit. Can't imagine why they wouldn't want to use a lovely word like cockpit, can you? Especially with all those stewardesses going in and out of it all the time. There's, one. There's a word that's changed, stewardess. First it was hostess, then stewardess, now it's flight attendant. You know what I call them? The lady on the plane. Sometimes it's a man on the plane now, that's good, equality, I'm all in favor of that. Sometimes they actually refer to these people as uniformed crew members. Uniformed. As opposed to that guy sitting next to you in the Grateful Dead t-shirt and the fuck you hat. <laughs> Who's working on his ninth little bottle of Kahlua, I might add. As soon as they close the door to the aircraft, that's when they begin the safety lecture. I love the safety lecture. This is my favorite part of the airplane ride. I listen very carefully to the safety lecture, especially that part where they teach us how to use the seat belts. <laughs> Imagine this. Here we are, a plane full of grown human beings, many of us partially educated, and they're actually taking time out to describe the intricate workings of a belt buckle. <laughs> Place the small metal flap in... But do you know what? Sometimes you'd be surprised. You some people need it. Like I do you know how many times that I've flown that the the I was gonna say steward. The flight attendant will come beside you and be like, sorry, took someone beside me. Sorry, could you please do your sub? And the person will be like just fumbling about for like five minutes. Cause some people don't fly that often. Even though cause it's not the same as your normal, you know, car seat, but it's different. So I do understand people that do that, but come on, this you should know. Come on. Fix up. Into the buckle. Well, I ask for clarification at that point. <laughs> Over here, please. Over here. Yes, thank you very much. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say place the small metal flap into the buckle or place the buckle over and around the small metal flap? <laughs> I'm a simple man. I do not possess an engineering degree, nor am I mechanically inclined. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Please continue with the wonderful safety lecture. <laughs> Seatbelt, high-tech shit. <laughs> the safety lecture continues. The next thing they do, they tell you to locate your nearest emergency exit. 
I do this immediately. <laughs> I locate my nearest emergency exit, and then I plan my route. You have to plan your route. It's not always a straight line, is it? Sometimes there's a really big fat fuck sitting right in front of you. Well, you know you'll never get over him. I look around for women and children, midgets and dwarfs, cripples, war widows, paralyzed veterans, people with broken legs, anybody who looks like they can't move too well. The emotionally disturbed come in very handy at a time like this. You might have to go out of your way to find these people, but you'll get out of the plane a lot goddamn quicker, believe me. I say, let's see, I'll go around the fat fuck, step on the widow's head, push those children out of the way, knock down the paralyzed midget, and get out of the plane where I can help others. I can be of no help to anyone if I'm lying unconscious in the aisle with some big cocksucker standing on my head. I must get out of the plane, go to a nearby farmhouse, have a Dr. Pepper, and call the police. The safety lecture continues. In the unlikely event... This is a very suspect phrase. Especially coming as it does from an industry that is willing to lie about arrival and departure times. In the unlikely event of a sudden change in cabin pressure. Roof flies off! <laughs> An oxygen mask will drop down in front of you. Place the mask over your face and breathe normally. Well, I have no problem with that. I always breathe normally when I'm in a 600 mile an hour uncontrolled vertical dive. I also shit no. Do you know what? I feel like we'll be all fucked. About 99.9% .9 of us, if something happens on the plane, we'll be fucked. Because do you know how many times that I've seen them do the old, you know, the old scenario, the old safety stuff? And I, like, I'm just watching them. I have my headphones on. And I'm like, if something happens, I'm fucked. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to do. Like, I know, obviously, put a mask on. Because I, I used to think if I had a kid right beside me, I want to help the kid. But apparently, it's better to help myself first than to help the kid. Someone explained to me. I can't remember the full reason. But I'll be... Like, everyone will be so scared. Like, you can't you can't be calm. Like, I can't picture someone. You, you'd, you'd have to be, I don't know, some, I don't know, some extra, some next level person for you to be calm in that situation. I'm absolutely legging it down the hall. The aisle, I said, the hall. I'm just trying to get out. <laughs> Sorry, that's me. Let me know what you guys do. Normally. Right in my... I also shit normally. Right in my pants! They tell you to adjust your oxygen mask before helping your child with his. I did not need to be told that. <laughs> In fact, I'm probably going to be too busy screaming to help him at all. This will be a good time for him to learn self-reliance. If he can program his fucking VCR, he can goddamn jolly well learn to adjust an oxygen mask. Fairly simple thing, just a little rubber band in the back is all it is. Not nearly as complicated as, say, for instance, a seatbelt. The safety lecture continues. In the unlikely event of a water landing. Why? Well, what exactly is a water landing? Am I mistaken, or does this sound somewhat similar to crashing into the ocean? Your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. Well, imagine that. My seat cushion. Just what I need to float around the North Atlantic for several days, <laughs> clinging to a pillow full of beer farts. Oh, God. I absolutely love that. That was absolutely hilarious. This guy is a genius. What a genius. I need to start checking him out. I've only done about probably three or four, but I haven't reacted to him in months. 
a mood legend 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 yeah please let me know any more legends like this i think yeah i need to start broadening my horizon and start doing more uh comedy reactions for from americans i was doing a lot of uh uk comedians so now i'm gonna start doing everyone doing everyone okay okay Eddie, relax but yeah my mate is gonna be joining me very soon tyler is gonna be joining me in my reaction so that's gonna be sick you're gonna get to see two people that have the same kind of you know thinking different kind of I don't know. This guy got me confused. I'm just trying to shite. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.